And it's my pleasure to um, have Kasturi Venkateswaran. Uh, it's fair to say that he's the catalyst for this meeting to happen. Uh, we visited Venkat first in 2019, and he came here, and he's spearheading this program of collaboration between India and the states, and for ISRO to take up some of these projects that they have been doing for some time. Thank you, Varsha, for the introduction. And uh, glad to see a lot of students here. And uh, the space biology course that we had here, um, you know, a few students, and uh, they, are, they have an assignment for this whole, you know, symposium uh, proceeding. So they will write something. So I'm glad that, you know, so many other uh, students from other places are here. And uh, a part of the course I have taught this also. Uh, so this one is nothing but NASA's you know, JPL where uh, Varsha as well as uh, Dr. Suresh, both of them came um, and then we started talking about, you know, having a, you know, uh, kind of collaboration between the institutions. So then we got this, uh, you know, space biology and after that, you know, Murthy, uh, you know, joined together and then talked with Dr. Arunan. Uh, so it become astrobiology and astrochemistry program. Okay, uh, it's a elective program right now, but uh, we'll see what what will happen next. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about uh, because of the limit of the time, I, I have only one section I'm going to talk about it, which is microbial survival on extreme radiation conditions using ISS external facility. What does that mean? External facility means you have the International Space Station, right? So that has the vast real estate outside that is that can be utilized. So if we think about panspermia, whether the microbes travel between the planet, it will be exposed to the radiation, extreme radiation conditions. But how do you do it with control, right? should be a controlled experiment, otherwise you do not know what you are talking about, you do not know what you are doing it. So we have taken some of the microbes that is extremely uh, resistant to radiation on the ground because you can generate the radiation level only to some extent. You cannot simulate the space radiation. You will miss some of them, one of, one of them is galactic radiation. So, if you are able to expose that with appropriate uh, scientific payload in a controlled manner, then you will be able to say something. I think I have to use this one here. So this is the one, but multiple uh, experiments conducted so far by um, our team. Um, the one that I'm going to talk about is uh, with the European Space Agency collaboration called PROTECT. So, Space Agency is actually sharing information sharing the facilities, sharing the technologies between them. So this is one of the things that ISRO should also think about sharing the thing that we already been, you know, conducted but in terms of collaboration. So that way you will be able to leap over the technology, the one that uh, Dr. Uma was talking about this morning. You don't need to repeat the same thing that other agencies are doing. You can collaborate with them and do a new science. Okay, so these are the things that we did with, you know, European Space Agency um, and I'm going to talk about this uh, 2008 stuff. What is it? Protect means microbial ecological perspectives of space exposed microbes. It is a genetic approach. Until then what they did was they took it, brought it back whether it's growing or not. And we started working together as a team, multiple experiments, around 16 experiments went in this one particular space payload, one of them is ours, to understand a radiation resistant strain of Bacillus pumulus isolated from a spacecraft assembly facility environment is being exposed to several conditions associated with the real space environment. Okay, what that mean? Why do, why do I do this uh, B pumulus, right? There are so many different things out there. Why did we select this B pumulus? Because that is one of the thing, again and again, we are isolating from the spacecraft related 
clean rooms. Okay, this may be the hitchhiker that went along with the Mars probes, because we have not sent a sterile spacecraft. You all have to understand. We are sending a spacecraft that has some minimal bio load. Okay, so if you are sending at that minimal bio load, hundred years of worth, uh, hundred years worth of time is saved. In other words, it won't multiply. It won't make red planet green. Okay, so it should be humanly possible. You cannot simply say. I want a sterile, sterile spacecraft that is devoid of things. It may be possible if you are making it, you know, on everything on titanium, but you cannot fly. You need to have your electronic um, box and other things that should withstand the microbial reduction technique. Okay, so these things like special microbial extremophiles will be the problem. So now we need to understand what it is, whether it is surviving in other planet, because for, for that we need to know the genomics, proteomics, and all the omics that we know. And also uh, we need to see whether under simulated conditions that is surviving better than the biodosimetry strain. Okay, example is this, UV254, all of us know it is breaking the DNA, that's how surface sterilization is happening. That's how American public health is treating the water and those strains in a basal cellulose 168 can be killed in 200 joules per meter square. But this one can survive 2000 joules with only one or two log reduction. So this is an extremophile by say, by, by radiation, UV radiation. But Mars UV is different, not only 254. Right? Let us simulate them. What is happening? All these things will go in two minutes. Even some other bacillus, pumulus and megatherium will go away within five minutes. But after 30 minutes, it is only three log reduction. Why 30 minutes is a thing? But if you keep on hitting it, maybe it is going. But are you going to expose these kind of things fully to my Martian UV. You have seen the geometry of those wheels, rovers. If it is get shattered, that will be sitting easily, no issue, right? So that's why we were taking it and then looking under this kind of different, uh, th those things you were not able to simulate now. So now we are taking it to the space to expose to this Space vacuum, solar extraterrestrial UV, simulated Mars, but you can also simulate the payload with the Martian thing by putting different layers of filters. Okay, so we did that there and galactic, uh, you know, cosmic radiation. So we did the conventional, traditional microbiology also to look at the simple CFU experiments, and also we did the all other warmings. This is the one facility called Expos UTEF facility by ESA, the Columbus module. This is Columbus module outside Columbus module. You see this thing, this is the, our payload, which I am going to show you a little bit. That's what's sitting here and sitting here. It went with the STS-122. This is the crew took it. This is the facility. This is the space, space payload. I'll take a few minutes to explain to you this. This is the main thing. Each disk that each uh, round thing that you are calling is, is, is a disk. You need to have multiple replicates of the same conditions, right? And this one, 110 nanometer, if you put the magnesium filter on top of it, anything 110 and above will go in. That is called space UV. And also it will have space vacuum in it and other things. Now if you shut the door, space vacuum is there, but no space UV going in. So it is called dark space. <coughs> Likewise, if you put this 200 nanometer in it with the supracell with a Martian 
atmospheric condition using maximum CO2 and other things also. And that is called Mars UV. And if you shut the door, it is called dark Mars. So we have four different conditions you can do it outside the space station. You take this whole thing, prepare this on the ground, take it out up to the space, I mean space station, ask the astronauts to walk in the space. So they, after the space walk, they go and build it and keep it, and everything is automatic. There is no crew involved. Crew involved is take this box, go and put it outside, fix it, bring the box after a certain period of time, bring it back to the earth. So less crew, okay? That's what is four different conditions. Send it out 2008, brought back 2010 with the 18 months exposure outside the space station. 18 months. We are not seeing whether it is growing or not. That's a different thing. It is, these are all spores, metabolically inactive. Okay? That means whether it is survive or not. These are the various different, you know, um, experimental, see, environmental conditions. For example, solar radiation, this, this much is 550 million joules of UV flux, flux everything. I have, we have already published, if anybody needed, you know, I can show you. The Martian atmosphere is 1.6 argon, 0.15 oxygen, and 2.7 nitrogen plus rest of them are carbon dioxide. So that is what the simulated thing. And one more important thing, there's a bio, microbiologist it is minus 22 plus 59. We were continuously measuring what it is. So the bacteria that survive under these conditions only can be studied. Okay. In, initially, we have to take and then look under the microscope how it is. So you are not changing anything. Take the coupon that I told you. Put it under the you know, environmental scanning electron microscope without processing anything. Okay, you are not changing it. So this one is controlled before flight. These are, you know, just bare aluminum and, the, you know, this is a mono layer of the spore. I told you, one top of another, if it is sitting, the top layer will may die, but it become a good blanket for the one which is on the bottom. Okay, so mono layer is very, very important. Then, control before flight. You look at it how it is, and the more mag, mag, magni, magnification is more. And then in some places you have pits and falls, so something will go and sit there. And this is ground control. We kept it for the same period of time, and this one is after 1.5 years. Some of them are. It is not as dense as this. That means it might have fried out. But some are sitting inside together or some are sitting underneath like this, okay? Now let's see how it look like. If you have UV top layer, which I have not shown you, there's a top layer and the middle and the bottom layer. The top layer is where the UV is coming. The mi middle and bottom layer is, get, all the UV get attenuated, okay? If it is exposed to UV, boom, everything gone, but you take the same coupon and throw it into a, in a microbiology media, some of them growing. So those are the ones that I took it out, 19 different uh, strains. I already told you it might have gone into that pits and falls. So rest of them is get fried, but the one that is sitting underneath this grown up. Okay, you take that and then regrow and see how it is happening. Only one generation, only one time. Otherwise, it may, the adaptive evolution, what will happen, you know, it may return back to the original thing. These blue are the red, and the blue are the one that is controlled. The red and then uh, green are another thing, which is UV space and UV Mars thing. They can survive twice as this one. This one could die in 2000, this is keep going in 4000. There is a phenotypic change. When you do the genome, no change at all. What that mean? It is doing something that make it, because spores are metabolically inactive, right? 
they cannot repair all these things, you know, by doing some like a denococcus, which is non performer. So, but some appoint mutation is making it to change its phenotype. But genotype is exactly same, whatever thing it was. That's why we did two, 2D DIGE. This is pre-proteome period, okay? So still we were able to find some of these things like, you know, um, you know, super dioxide dismutase and other things who were expressed compared to the control. And we published multiple papers. Anybody interested, please come by and then I can talk to them. One important thing is here, spores, you cannot make it biotechnologically important. You need to have vegetative cells. You need to see whether that phenotypic change that I told you, whether any of the proteins are being produced. Yes, this particular thing, which is dark space 40 T5 strain, is very well good for, you know, 1000 joules. These are the vegetative cells, not the spores. Okay? That means it produces a protein so that is, you know, against this UV, I mean, resistant to this UV. But this is the control strain will be die off in 200, even 900, it is still only two or three. So it has some biotechnological application. One of the company bought this from us, the license, and then they produced a sunscreen product. It is in the market right now. Okay, so this kind of thing that you can um, take it and then use it for various different radiation resistant purposes. One is sunscreen, as I said already, you can use it, you know, as a, a radiation protective shield for your spacewalk with the, with the has a you know um, helmet and you are wearing the space suit that can also be utilized okay and then the proteome is already showed here and then one last thing I'm here in, in the instance of science I have to give back to my country something so I'm working with Arunan and his uh, colleague Jagdish to see whether we can do something. This is the one being proposed now with these team members, Jagdish and Suresh, uh, Sundaram and Gopal Hegde and Arunan, and uh, uh, me as advisor for this. So this is the exclusively Indian Institute of Science experiment. This is the one that we have already proposed and done, a balloon experiment we are going to do for what? You guys develop some insight to growth measurement. A system payload, you develop it, instead of bringing the sample back, can we measure the proliferation of these microbes? So that will be a good astrobiological experiment for Indian scientists as well. So the mechanistic understanding of bacterial spores project will elucidate the underlying molecular mechanisms of the stressors associated with space conditions using the microfluidic hardware component that will be designed by Indian Institute of Science. This is not one man army. This is be, happened because of the eminent scientists that worked with me for over the period of time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Venkat. We, we can have a couple of questions for Venkat. Hi. So I want. I know uh, you, so faculty or students no, or what? I, I am an MSc student in TIFR. Good. That's fine. Yeah. Oh. So I was asking uh, the the memory of the radiation. Uh, so they were up there for one and a half years. You said. So I have two questions. First is how long is it persisting, the memory, and how fast does it kick in? So if I understand right, it is that uh, the pine mutation permanent or not? So it is not permanent because if you multiply, if you start doing uh, multiple time, it, it returns back to the original, okay? Mm -hmm. But if you are exposing the radius continuously for over the period of, you know, 10, 10, 20 years, I do not know what will happen. You may make it as a super bug, then the memory stays. But as that's why I told you, I showed you vegetative cells, some of them actually uh, producing some, but genome is still the same. But the phenome, the phenotypic change, the proteomes, is producing some uh, compounds. So that is become permanent because every time you go and then get it. 
Did I answer your question? It is the the the, the answer is I don't know something that because we, we need to do it 50 mm. to 100 years of continuous radiation or yes it has some strains are having you know established something that is permanent uh, phenotypic change not genotypic change yeah okay uh, i have many question but i will only ask two uh, how did you assess the like a uh, cell wall integrity what method did you use for that and did you also uh, test the like uh, viability of like spore using different like uh, nutrient condition of the, after the like damage, cell wall damage? Answer is, uh, for, let me answer the for, you know, second okay. question. The viability checked only by a simple method that it can grow, which is TSA growth or TSB growth, which is, you know, uh, for the people that do not know, which is solid agar is TSA, liquid agar is TSB, okay? And I guarantee you, you do 100 different uh, things in like uh, uh, cultural conditions, it will not be the same, you know, it will not be going to grow, okay? We'll discuss about that more. The other one is cell wall damage. So we have full uh, omics analysis, genomic analysis, proteomic analysis, no. but I welcome to that. And you cannot extract the cell wall only with the little uh, uh, you know, coupon that you are sending it. Only you can do it only after you regrow them. So that means when you are regrowing, it is not original. We'll talk yeah. more later. Cell wall is the physiological features. And uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm asking about integrity of the cell wall, not the integral. That's microscopy. Okay. Okay. Mainly my Thank you, Venkat. In the interest of time, we'll move on.